enabled us to generate a better operating leverage to offset some of the gross margin contraction due to increasing input prices. That's the main impact for the quarter ended December 31, 2020, on Rs. 61.6 crores against Rs. 26.3 crores in the same period last year, which is a strong growth of 134%. Friends, the growth has been broad-based with secular growth across all the divisions, led by improvement in consumer sentiment, festive season, reduction in COVID-19 cases, and also strong manufacturing base. The order book in the current quarter and forecast for the forthcoming fiscal continues to be very strong. The results also demonstrate, my friends, the durability of our business model as well as our strong execution capability. While the overall demand outlook has improved significantly and the growth is reflected across businesses, we are currently facing headwinds in terms of increased commodity costs. Certain certain demand coupled with few supply side issues to global trade demand for many commodities, resulting in sharp price inflation, as well as occasional shortage of material. We expect the cost pressure to continue in the near midterm, which will pose a challenge to our ODM business margin. However, our frugal cost structures and large scale gives us a comparative edge in this difficult situation also. We are continuing to monitor the situation closely and address the margin in the holding in business through combination of collaborative price increases and also focus on inventory planning. So we have always been focusing on very prudent capital allocation, building large scale to generate operating leverage, migrating more and more to our own design solutions, deepening relationship with existing customers, and acquisition of new customers. Further, whenever the opportunity comes, we are entering the new domains, however, without losing the focus on our capability and core competence in electronics manufacturing. Also in certain verticals, we see that they are globally competitive, and also have technical bandwidth to start exploring the global markets. We are well positioned with a robust balance sheet with a cash balance of 151 crores, net debt of negative 54 crores as on 31 December 20. Our balance sheet strength enables us to weather any future uncertainty and also invest in the long term development of the business. It has enabled us to invest to continue to invest in our organization and people through this entire challenging period of COVID. We also continue to step up our investments in people, in hiring and development of our R&D capabilities. I'm sure the benefits of this, which are already showing results, is going to further strengthen our business in the long term. In addition, strong return ratios have been maintained with an ROE of 23.8% and ROCE of 31.7% at the end of Q3 2021. We will continue to focus on three drivers of future cash flow, funding expansion, working capital efficiencies, and extremely disciplined investment and capital allocation. Uh, <clears throat> now I'll share with you the performance and the strategy in each of the verticals going forward. I start with LED television that's consumer electronics. The revenues for the quarter and the review was Rs. 1360 crores against Rs. 454 crores in the same period last year. That is a robust growth of 199%. This has been led both by volume and pricing growth. Operating profit also saw a significant increase <coughs> of 143% year on year. So we generated an operating profit in this quarter of 39.4 crores against rupees 11.5 crores in the same period last year. Operating profit margins also expanded from 2.5% to 2.9% year on year 
This is on account of operating leverage, higher level of backward integration through the PCBA rule, improved sales mix from larger screen sizes, that is 43 inches and above, as against 32 inches in better models. Growth has also the intervention, wherein the LED TVs were shifted from OGL to the restricted category. We presently have a capacity of 4.4 million sets, including backward integration in LCM and SNT lines. This is already the largest capacity in India. It is almost 30% of India's LED TV requirement. The order book and forecast from our customers continues to be very healthy. So as I mentioned, the last earning calls, we are further expanding our capacity to 5.5 million sets, which I am confident will be completed by Q2 of next fiscal to catch the festive period. <laughs> this will be done by adding an automated 65 inches integrated line with LCM and FM final assembly to meet the customer demands. With this increased capacity, we will have a large share of Indian requirements equivalent to almost 40. Further, we are adding to our SMT capacity. And the PCBA capacity has already been increased from 1 million to 1.8 million. By Q2 of this fiscal, next fiscal, will be increased to 2.8 million. Now we have a total area of half a million square feet in our integrated campus at Tirupati, which is fully backwardly integrated. Further, we are backwardly integrating even more because we have attraction and an instruction from our customer to start doing the injection molding and also the backlight assembly. So in India, we are one of the most, in fact, the most vertically integrated LED TV plant. Further, we have strengthened our R&D team and they've already developed a new cost effective solution uh, for both analog and smart TVs. They've also developed the Android TV solutions. And now we are working with Google to cover up the IP issues. Next, coming on to lighting. The revenues for the quarter witnessed a growth of 26% year on year. We did have revenue of 349 crores in Q3 of 2021 against 277 crores in the same period last year. Within a very short span of time, our lighting business has exceeded pre-COVID growth levels and is back to the strong growth trajectory which we have been demonstrating. Operating profit also witnessed a significant growth of 39% year on year. We had an operating profit of 33 crores in Q3 of 2021 against 4 crores in the same period last year. The margins in lighting business have further expanded from 8.6% to 9.5%. This is again due to operating leverage, migrating more to our own design solutions, value engineering, product and productivity improvement, and better product mix. Practically all the brands in lighting uh, are our customers today and they are all on ODM basis. Also, most of the customers, we have a very large share of their wallet. We are presently India's largest ODM in lighting, and <coughs> we have a capacity of LED bulb of 300 million, which is almost 45% of the Indian requirement. We have also developed solutions for smart LED bulbs, batteries, and downlight as an emergency bulbs <coughs> for various customers. In the case of batons, we have already expanded our capacity to 2 million per month. Uh, we have, all the book is very healthy, so we are further expanding our capacity in phase 1 to 3 million and then to 4 million. This will again be almost 40 to 45 percent of the Indian requirement. Also in downlighters, the order book is very healthy. So we expanded our capacity from 600k per month to 1.2 million per month in this phase. Also, we have created a capacity of 5 million per month for 0.5 watt decorative lamp. The order book friends is very good. Therefore, we have decided to set up another factory for lighting. This is going to be in the hinterland. 
so that the capital allocation again is very frugal. The sites are being explored and we have almost finalized on one site to set up this new factory and hopefully this should be operative by Q3 of the forthcoming fiscal. We feel that the kind of volumes in the entire range of our portfolio we are now globally competitive and amongst the top companies in the world as far as volume is concerned in certain SCAs. We have the cost competitiveness and also the technical bandwidth. We have already started exporting for our anchor customer to US and Indonesia and we are in discussions with some very large retail chains globally. We are confident in the next couple of quarters we are going to have significant breakthrough in getting large accounts for export of LED bulbs. We have also completed automation of one third of our capacity for LED bulbs, which will have a reduction in our manufacturing costs and boost productivity. Further, we are the teams are in the teams are developing the outdoor lighting solutions, mainly the street light, and this product portfolio will be launched by Q2 of the coming fiscal. The third uh, vertical home appliances, the venues for the quarter saw a good growth of 68% year on year. From 68 crores in Q3 of 1920, it has increased to 115 crores in Q3 of 2021. The operating profit, however, has increased by 28% year on year, uh, which is lower than the revenue growth. So it has grown from 9 crores in Q3 of 1920 to 11.8 crores in Q3 of 2021. This has been primarily because of increase in the input prices and also the import freight rates. Uh, there is a certain lag in passing on this price increase. So the margins for the current quarter also would be under some pressure. But we are hopeful that from the next quarter we will be back to normal. The order book in this, in this particular vertical again continues to be very high, very good for the current quarter also. So we have decided to expand our capacity at a new site in Dehradun, in an adjacent plot of land, uh, wherein we are going to expand the capacity of semi-automatic from 1.2 million to almost 1.6 million. We have the largest product portfolio right from 6 kg up to 11.5 kg, and also we have more than 170 models which is the largest product portfolio either with any brand owner or with any outsourcing company. Our plant in Tirupati campus for fully automatic top loading is almost complete. The lines are being laid and the trials will begin from February and February end early March. So this is a complete product portfolio with a capacity of almost 600k per year. The combined capacity in two plants is going to be 2.2 million. Against the Indian demand of 7 to 7.5 million, we'll have almost 30% capacity with the largest for our portfolio and a footprint both in north and south. So we are confident that uh, finally it's going to take some time that it's going to be an extremely important and a strategic vertical for us. Coming to the next vertical of mobile phones and EMS division, for this quarter onwards, we'll, be, we'll start reporting our mobile and EMS division <coughs> revenues and profitability combined. Revenues for this quarter grew, a quarter under review was 299 crores, as against 140 crores of mobile revenues in the same period last year which is a growth of 114%. In the current quarter, the revenues of set of boxing and medical equipment was between 69 crores and 11 crores respectively out of 299 crores. Operating profit also witnessed a strong growth of 328% at rupees 13.8 crores against rupees 3.2 crores in the same period last year. This is primarily on account of contribution of our anchor customers through the phone sector box and medical electronic business. Also, operating margins expanded from 2.3% to 4.6% year on year. We have the largest capacity of 2.3 million 2G phones per month for our anchor customer, 
which is being used for both exports and domestic market. We have a very healthy order book from our anchor customer for 2G Home, and this will not be a part of the client PLI scheme. We have already closed agreements with new global customers, global brands, Motorola and Nokia. The commercial production for Nokia has already started. For Motorola, the audits are happening, and we are confident that the commercial production will start by end February, early March. <laughs> the new factory under the PLI scheme is already being set up. The trials are happening. And to meet the eligibility criteria of the 50 crores of CapEx, uh, to meet the PLI, to get the PLI benefits has already been met. So uh, finally, our capacity for a smartphone annually in the next couple of years is going to be almost 20 million per annum. We think it is a very big opportunity for us, and we are very confident of generating a cumulative revenue for around 25 to 28,000 crores uh, over a period of five years with 3% kind of EBITDA and a robust ROC after some ramp up challenges. And it will be a quick payback on the investment. We are confident that we will be doing revenues much beyond the ceiling limit for each of the years starting 21 22 as per the forecast from our customers. We also have an advantage as compared to our competition that we are one company which is purely focused on manufacturing and EMS activity, and there is no clash of other competition which is promoting its own brand also. Further, as uh, we do in, we have done in other verticals, we'll be seriously exploring the backward integration of chargers, batteries, and mechanicals uh, in this particular category also. In set-top boxes, we manufacture nine lakh set-top boxes for Geo, Dish TV, and 3D cable in Q3, and the total revenue is 6-9 crores. We have a very healthy order book of approximately 3 to 4 lakhs a month for the forthcoming quarters. Medical electronics, we have manufactured 500 units of <coughs> the RT-PCR machine from Molbio. The revenue for the quarter under review was 11 crores with a healthy operating margin of almost 28%, an extremely high ROC. Further, we have got into a new domain of variables that is mainly TWS. This is our tire with boat, and we've got an initial order of 10,000 units. And the manufacturing for this particular product will start from February itself. Uh, we understand that the government is rolling out a PLI scheme for variable which will be definitely studying in pursuing. Coming to the next vertical of security surveillance systems, there is a 10% year-on-year growth and 40% sequential growth in our share of 50% revenues to rupees 55.5 crores with an operating margin of 3.5%. In my last, uh, last uh, interaction with you, I shared that the demand for this in this particular vertical was under pressure. However, I'm pleased to inform you that it has recovered extremely well, and we have a very, very healthy order book. And the folk, as per the forecast, we're further expanding our capacity in this vertical also. Last but not least, our vertical of reverse logistics. Uh, the revenue for the quarter in this particular vertical was be 4.5 crores and an operating profit of 46 lakhs. Uh, mainly, this is for set-top boxes and LED TV panel repair business. And now we have opened up a new center for reverse artists in Tirupati also, because this is more of a strategy kind. So I would like to stop now and uh, hear me and Saurabh are there to, to respond to your questions, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Vihang Subramaniam from Samsung Asset Management. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Thanks a lot for taking my question. Uh, just, you know, two quick questions. On the PLI, uh, you know, we've signed up with, I guess, Nokia and Motorola, right? So just wanted your thoughts on why these brands versus, like, other brands like Xiaomi, etc. Like, I kind of had the impression that these are sort of weaker brands. So just your thoughts on this and how would this business look post-PLI, like post-FI25, like? So these are the first two customers that we have analyzed. And uh, customer recognition is an ongoing process. Further, the, okay. the order book and the forecast given by Motorola is itself consuming almost most of the ceiling that the government offers. And also in Motorola's case, a large part of revenue is going to be generated from the global markets. So we are of a firm conviction that this business relationship is on an extremely strong footing. And we are fairly confident that it is going to extend beyond the PLI times. It's a, it's a huge deepening of relationship. The second question is that how beyond the PLI period of 24-25, this business is going to be sustainable. So we feel that four to five years is uh, is good enough a time wherein the government is supporting the industry in its infancy stage, and this is a time more when more deep make of manufacturing will happen in India, more backward integration will take place within Dixon and in India and the country and so is the case going to be with Dixon that we are going to be globally competitive without any PLI benefit. Now, this is the way it works with most of the industry and we feel that it is going to happen in this particular vertical for Dixon also. But, so, and any thoughts on why these customers versus like other ones like Xiaomi, Samsung? So Samsung is already a large relationship between us and Dixon, uh, between us and Samsung, you know. So it's, we are already there, uh, there, there's a supply of a complete quantity of 2G phones. And also please appreciate for smartphones, Samsung is already, is also a beneficiary under the PLI scheme. Now, why not Swami and why uh, Motorola and Nokia? Well, uh, again I say and I can't share more that customer acquisition is a, is a continuous exercise. So nothing stops at Nokia and Motorola. Got it, got it. So and just my second question on TV, you mentioned that now you're 40% of the market, right? So at what percent of the market do you think you can go up to after which, you know, you will like be growing in line with the end market? So uh, uh, this year, in spite of the pandemic, we're going to close almost at 2.9 million to 3 million sets. And last year we did around 2.1 million sets. So we feel that we'll continue to grow at 20-25% this year also. However, to be very candid and transparent, the issue today is not with the order book. The issue as of now is with the supply chain challenges that globally the availability of open cell and glass is under huge pressure and we feel that at least for a quarter or so, not more, it will continue to be under pressure. So in Dixon's case, uh, in the television vertical, uh, growth we are fairly confident will, will come and we should have a good number in the forthcoming fiscal also. Now, uh, how it pans out? After that, we still have to wait and watch because uh, we have a large share of uh, the Indian play and the other large players are already doing the remote manufacturing of some other large partners. So we're going to have to wait and watch and see for that. Got it, sir. And just the last bit from my side on lighting, uh, you're expanding your capacity in battens and down lighters. So at, by which year you think this capacity will be completely utilized? Would it be like FI22 or 23? Any, any sense on that? So uh, our order book is extremely strong. 
In fact, uh, there has been a, some mismatch that we did not anticipate this kind of an order book. So we already have the order book for utilizing this capacity. We have to really rush in getting this footprint ready. Thank you. Mr. Subhanman, I request to join the question queue for any follow-up as we have several participants waiting for their turn. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hi, sir. Uh, uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, uh, so Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. So, uh, in uh, continuation uh, with the previous uh, question, uh, in uh, LED TV, uh, so if you can give, what is the current uh, uh, market size this year? And uh, you told around 2.9 to 3 million pieces we are doing currently. Uh, and you told uh, we are also doing uh, the higher inches, uh, that is 43 inch and above. Uh, so uh, what is the opportunity there and is there any export opportunity which can be given? This is my first question. And uh, my second question is with respect to the variables, how much amount of potential revenue uh, that we can get from the variables, uh, if you can give the, that uh, outlook also will be great, sir. So on the LED television side, uh, one, uh, the market has shifted uh, from 32 inches to 43 inches. Mm -hmm. So the unit value of our sale, which used to hover at around 9 to 10,000 rupees, has increased to almost 14 to 15,000 rupees in the last two quarters. So that's a significant jump. Okay. And also volume-wise, uh, we have an extremely healthy order book because we have been continuously acquiring customers. Uh, starting with Xiaomi, we added Samsung, we added pri uh, private labels of Flipkart, Nokia and Motorola. We have added Alliance's private label. We have added View. We have Patrick So uh, continuously we are adding and we are also expecting some more customer acquisitions in the forthcoming quarter. So uh, both revenue-wise, unit value-wise, uh, margin expansion-wise, backward integration-wise, I think we are on a healthy ticket. And 21-22 looks to be fairly good. In fact, very good. Now, whether there is any potential for export, uh, I don't think there is any potential for export. Because until unless there is an open cell fab in India, as a country, I don't think we are, we, we are there for export of LED television. On the durable side, uh, our understanding is that market is approximately 5,000 watts. But it's growing at a very fast pace, and we have tied up with Boat. Uh, Boat has an extremely smart and aggressive management team. Within a very short period of time, they have been able to create an extremely good and iconic kind of brand, not only for the domestic market, but for the global market. So it's still too early to forecast uh, the numbers, but uh, I have a good feel about this business. So I'm not in a position to share the numbers as such, but I think it's going to be a good, strong, robust relationship. Got it, sir. And uh, second question is with respect to the uh, PLI scheme. So uh, I read in news articles that so basically the uh, FI 20 year base uh, year is uh, planning to get, I mean people have requested, companies have requested to get shifted to FI 21. Um, so is it like, uh, is it likely to get stuck with FI 20 itself as a base or FI 21 is it likely to be rolled forward and is there any implication uh, because of that? So FI uh, 2021, uh, because of the supply chain constraints, both on the display and the micro business side, uh, we will not be meeting, and none, nobody will be meeting the thresholds. So the industry has requested the government for some kind of uh, flexibility and extension. Uh, we are still waiting for government's response. Let's see how it pans out. For next year, 21-22, the threshold is 1,000 crores, which we are very confident to meet uh, fairly soon, uh, both on the side of threshold revenue, as well as the capex for meeting the eligibility criteria.
Uh, Mr. Song, have a question. Please join me before any follow-up. Also, before we move to the next question, I'd like to remind the participant to please limit the question to two per participant. If time permits, you may join the queue for any follow-up. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Ghosh from DSP. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Just uh, the first question is in terms of Motorola, you mentioned the audits are on. I uh, just wanted to get a sense since these are mostly for uh, you know overseas volumes. What kind of overall? Because I believe Motorola does about 40, 41 million kind of uh, uh, handsets. What kind of market share or production share that you envisage to get it over a two to three year framework? How should one look at it from that perspective? So my sense is that uh, uh, by year three or year four, at least fifteen to twenty percent. Uh, of Google requirement of Google. Okay, okay, fair enough. And uh, in terms of Nokia, again, is that number going to be similar because their volumes are far lower, or is it mostly for the domestic market for the Nokia PLA that you signed? So Nokia to start with is for the domestic market. Okay, so yes, that will be that's an initial discussion for exports, but it is going to be step by step. So Nokia to start with this for domestic. Okay, and there's one more, uh, uh, or a couple of more guys whom you're talking to uh, in terms of mobile PLI, is it? Yeah, yeah, we are in uh, very advanced stages of discussions with some very large Google brands. I'm not going to share more details. Yeah, but we are in sure. discussions. Okay, and so just one last question. Uh, uh, in your sense, where is this production getting shifted to? I'm saying, I'm, in terms of Motorola, they must be already producing in some part of the world. Where is the shift? And uh, if, if you can just help us understand that. You're talking about shifting the global footprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The global production shift that is happening. If they're going, if they're going to give you the 15, 20 percent of it, where is where, where does the shift happen from? So at present, uh, the, if you see the global footprint of uh, Motorola, is presently in China, uh, it's in Brazil, and for the domestic market, it was in India with one of the EMSs. So I see the China production being shifted out to India for servicing the global requirements also. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bharatiya from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, sir. Uh, so my first question. Uh, so my first question is on the LED TV business. Uh, if you could just help us understand what proportion of our revenues would be coming from existing customers like Xiaomi, Panasonic, and others, uh, and what proportion uh, possibly would be coming from uh, new customers that we have acquired. Um, uh, and how is the ramp up for Samsung? Uh, so I'm just sorry, this way. So I'm just uh, in this quarter three uh, uh, between uh, Xiaomi and Samsung, almost 75 percent of our revenues are coming, and then balance uh, 24 percent uh, revenues are coming from the other brands. Okay, and uh, uh, Samsung. Yeah. I feel that uh, with the addition of the new customers, this 75 percent is going to go down to somewhere between 65 to 70 percent, and balance is going to happen from other customers and new customers. Yeah. And also to add to it, I say since last year, same period last year, uh, uh, this both these customers used to contribute almost. Uh, so yeah, uh, the top two customers last year was contributing almost 85 odd percent, so it has significantly decreased to that extent. And as Mr. Lamarachan will continue to be with, uh, continue to get lower with more customer requisitions. Understood. And as far as Samsung contract is concerned, uh, we have completely ramped up uh, 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 with the overall kind of volumes that we were looking for them, 500 to 600,000 units this year. Uh, we will be achieving that? So we, uh, we, we have been guided for volume of almost 0.7 million in the fourth quarter. We think that we should be achieving those numbers. Uh, sorry, sir, I missed that. Uh, uh, so, Aditya, basically, this year we should, uh, for Samsung, we should be closing somewhere around uh, closer to 5 lakh point kind of a number. And next year we have been given an order book of somewhere around 7 lakh. 
perfect perfect understood um and my next question is on the tip up box business um uh, how do you see the revenue potential for the tip up box business uh, and could there be an export opportunity out here we feel that the set up box business would be around 350 to 400 crores okay and uh, uh, i don't see an export opportunity in, in set up box as of now yeah this mainly for the domestic markets understood sir uh, and lastly sir uh, in sorry i just a request you to please uh, join the queue funny follow sure sure thank you all okay, right thank you the next question is from the line of tejas Shet from Nippon India AMC, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, Atulji. Good evening, Sarab. Um, okay. Now, first, um, two questions. One, um, we keep hearing that there is a huge supply chain issue on the chip side, and even you also mentioned about the open cell. Uh, one, how you ensure that the supply chain for a new player like us, I mean, in the PLI, uh, gets uh, a preference at the vendor level. uh and do the brands uh, help you in getting this supply chain uh, process in place so uh, there is uh, there are there are two parts to this this issue this this uh, point one is uh, you specifically asked uh, in the context of mobile and pi so there the supply chain and the sourcing and procurement is managed by the brand owner who starts it so we feel confident that uh, with the cloud of uh, the large global brands like motorola and also nokia they are overcoming that and i can see it uh, falling in place then the issues are uh, usually into the red lighting i think uh, we took a very prudent call back in september and october to accumulate inventory particularly of driver ic and led chips uh, which is we are one of the few manufacturers who are able to execute the business and we continue to have the inventory and supply chain in place in spite of the problems and that is one of the primary reasons for consolidation and in increase in volumes and revenue and lighting for dixon uh in the case of televisions uh, there is a global shortfall of consent uh, so even the big ones like samsung and xiaomi are facing the challenges but let me assure you that uh, they are much ahead of their peers in competition in sourcing the open set so they are not at a level the same could have been much better if they had the complete quantity sourced but they are much ahead so in turn dixon is in a better situation as compared to competition okay okay so the onus of the supply chain getting in place is on the brand uh, is it in the case of the prescriptive in the case of prescriptive business in this in the okay. lighting we have to manage that okay uh second question uh, now when the uh, motorola uh, uh, manufacturing or assembling has started uh what are the service gaps which uh, motorola would want you to fulfill over next 2 years uh when they compared when they compare you with their uh, current uh, sourcing uh, from china are there any um, are there any service gaps which they would want you to fulfill over next 2 3 years so the first and the foremost is the technical audit qualification and uh, it's a very comprehensive audit and dixon uh, they're gearing up for it they have qualified the first audit and now since the lines have been installed the second audit and trial of the first two models is happening yeah, there are definitely innovation challenges but we feel confident we should be able to overcome that and the commercial production should uh, start by in february early march now this is what has to be sustained they have an extremely close monitoring system both from china headquarters and with their india teams so that deliverable is extremely important the second is on the aspect of the business processes it's an american company with an american culture all the chinese ownership now but the the whole business processes flow from there 
So Nixon has to align and gear up for that. Now these two are extremely important deliverables on which Dixon will have to get up and mature more to, to really uh, reach and the optimum level of customer satisfaction. These are going to be the most critical things apart from cost of course. Cost, I'm very sure, will be. So if we are able to deliver on it, and we're working on it, let me show you, uh, then I think the relationship can be taken to the next level. Okay, okay, okay. That's helpful. Uh, just last, um, we recently saw, and yesterday's budget had this um, tariff uh, custom increase on the uh, on the PCBs. Um, mm -hmm. I would just want to know at present uh, how much of the PCBs which we uh, assemble are uh, sourced in house, and two three years down the line, uh, what could be this uh, percentage? Be? So uh, there is the, what the notification says the inputs for PCBs. Okay, okay. Now, on most of the inputs for PCBA, they fall under the IPA1, and the duty is 0%, and the government cannot increase the duty. However, there are certain items, like connectors or inductors, on which there is an increase of duty. But that's a very minuscule number. And in any case, for us, it's a pass on, so it's not that much of a challenge. On the okay. other side, the duties have been increased on the inputs of chargers and batteries. Yeah. In the short term, there will be some small cost increase for the mobile brands, not for Dixon because it's a pass on. But it's in line with the government's efforts to deepen the manufacturing. So I think that way it's fine. Okay. No, I was just trying to uh, understand is there an uh, opportunity for us? to backward integrate further in the PCB components or even larger for that matter PCB, the whole PCB manufacturing uh, over the next two, three years? So we are not uh, looking at uh, backward integration on that side. Uh, however, we will definitely be looking at the backward integration uh, opportunities in the case of chargers, the battery packs and the mechanicals because that's our core. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naval from MK Global. Please go ahead. Sir, congratulations uh, for good set of numbers. Uh, I have uh, two mm -hmm. questions. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. How are you? Uh, sir, I have two questions. One on uh, on CAPEX. Uh, any uh, number you want to state for FI21 and 22 as you are expanding capacity uh, in various uh, segment. And second, on lighting, uh, as you have stated, there would be new facilities which you would be setting up. So, will that be under, uh, you know, uh, upcoming PLI scheme or it would be uh, separate from that? And lastly, uh, you know, Saurabh, if you can provide uh, volume numbers for the quarter. So, sorry, I'll first respond on the lighting and numbers is uh, Saurabh to me. He'll, he'll discuss the numbers again. So the lighting side, uh, novel, uh, uh, with or without PLI, in any case, we will be expanding our capacity. And in all probability, this facility will be coming up at good for Uttarakhand. Right? Because the order book is extremely healthy, and if we don't do it fast, we're going to lose the business, and we're also going to hamper our relationship with our customers. Now we are expecting the PLI lighting a PLI for lighting to be announced sometime by second or third week of February. And we have been deeply interfacing with the government on the contours of that scheme. We are awaiting that scheme. And uh, if it helps us in growing our business, which my sense is it will, we will be definitely pursuing it and will align our new factory under the PLI scheme. Uh, so, now on the CAPEX side, uh, in the first nine months, we have already done a CAPEX of 104 odd crores. Uh, mainly, the CAPEX has gone into the fully automatic uh, washing machine project and also the mobile uh, PLI project. And uh, we expect to close anywhere between 145 to 155 odd crores uh, when we close this financial year. Uh, and on the volume side, numbers, uh, so yes, uh, if I take segment wise, any DTV or volumes was. Uh, 9 lakhs as against 4.5 lakhs in period last year, 
So there is a growth of almost 100 percent. So we must have seen that consumer electronics is actually seen as a quarter of percent. So half of that has come to value, but the balance is from on account of the higher selling prices on the higher category TV that we are doing. Uh, as far as lighting is concerned, if I break it down between LED bulb, pattern bulb lighters, and all, so LED bulb we sold almost six four bulbs. Uh, Batten we sold almost uh, 45 lakh uh, batters. The down lighters 14 lakh, 14 lakhs, and the balance other which is drivers, tea light and balas, so was around 56, 57 or lakhs. A uh, washing machine we sold around 2.4 lakhs, and uh, over mobile phones we sold around 75 lakhs, which was majorly 72 lakhs was uh, feature phones and 3 lakh smartphones. Of course, this number of smartphones will keep increasing under the PLI. And in terms of CC, in terms of uh, CCTV, uh, we sold around nine lakh units, and DVR was around two lakhs. And set-top box, as uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, it was nine lakhs for a quarter. And uh, the RTP share machine for Molgu was around uh, uh, around four fifty units for this quarter. Thank you, sir, for for the detailed uh, answer and best wishes uh, for the future quarters. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Beth from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening and congratulations for the strong performance. Huh? Um, I have three Renu. questions. Hi. Uh, two questions. First, um, given that uh, our core business is having uh, much wider growth opportunities and new business segments are opening up, be it mobile phones, set-top boxes, um, something on cards for laptops and tablets as well. So, as a company, how are we building uh, our teams and capabilities and leadership to manage growth across all these businesses and uh, drive uh, long-term sustainability? Uh, so, first, would be just to understand more on the people side. Um, what are we doing, and how are we uh, helping to build uh, the organization um, as far more robust? And second would be. Um, The way we have seen opportunities opening up on the mobile phone side, uh, on the telecom or related equipment, if we see, uh, see the laptop and tablet segment, uh, what would be a right to win a uh, business in this segment? And uh, if markets open up, um, would to what extent we would be willing to invest and uh, scale our portfolio in this business? That's it for my side. So, responding to your first question, Renu. Hmm. uh talent acquisition is presently an extremely important in a focused exercise uh so let me assure you although it's not easy and it's very challenging uh we have strengthened our hr department and we have brought in senior people at the level of young manager from some extremely good organization we have put our hr processes in place and we are really strengthening our senior middle management team and middle management team across all the functions whether it's design expertise in tooling and metals expertise in manufacturing the latest quality management systems it and manufacturing engineering systems all across we are recruiting in mobile and we have tied up with the global consultant who was the global manufacturing head with one of the largest ems companies in paris Will be guiding us in this graduating up program. So it's not easy, but I'm extremely conscious of it. And we have uh, raised a very pertinent question. Uh, we are these are faith we are strongly pursuing. Yeah. Apart from it, we are also strengthening our IT processes, and we have engaged EY for writing a blue book and defining our processes. Uh, further, uh, at the board level, we have also expanded our board, and uh, yeah, you will be hearing something soon. Uh, so all that is happening. Now you talked about the new opportunities of PLI. Uh, yeah, we are very closely looking at uh, both IT and wearables PLI because that's. Uh, That's a part of our core competence. Uh, let the PLI be announced, and we'll be definitely pursuing it. In the case of wearables, we already have a partner in board. So we already have an anchor customer. 
-hmm. And in the case of uh, ITPLI, also we have a relationship with a large IT player. Right. So you are the relationship with the closely person. Who could help us? Right. As in, uh, if you understand, yeah, at least for laptops or tablets, um, those this is initial stage a relationship with Moto or Lenovo uh, could come handy to um, expand this portfolio, new portfolio for us. So, uh, yeah, Renu, I'm not in a position to respond to that. Yeah, so we'll definitely be pursuing that. Sure. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Tulsi. Uh, in the earlier part of your uh, comments, you mentioned about cost in technology global leadership. Uh, were your comments confined to lighting alone or uh, it extended to more? So, uh, Mr. Shah, uh, first of course, I was referring to lighting because in lighting, we feel that we have already reached a certain level wherein we can venture into the global market. Wherein we have already started and we are getting a very positive response from the customers. The second vertical I am referring to wherein we are a strong ODM player is washing washing machine solutions, fully automatic top loading. Now the product portfolio that we have, which is going to be launched in the next two months, three months, and also the cost structures and the industrial footprint in Turukiti campus just being 125 kilometers away uh, from Chennai port and also the numbers and the research work that we have done, we feel confident that six to eight quarters down the line, it opens up a global market for us. So I was referring to these two product solutions. Sure. And uh, uh, you correctly reiterated three pillars of your strategy, uh, which is to grow the business and earnings, uh, to improve upon working capital efficiency and to be very uh, prudent and wise about capital allocation and raising capital efficiency bar. Uh, on the first part of that earnings uh, expansion, uh, would you be able to give a broad idea of size of opportunity of each of the categories we are in our share today? And what kind of outcome do you think in three to five years uh, we can expect in each of those categories? Uh, so responding to uh, each category, uh, let's, I'll start with lighting. Now, uh, please appreciate uh, Dixon is somewhere around uh, 1300 to 1500 crores revenue range. Now, energy bulb alone, the global market is approximately $8 billion. Now, the globally competitive, we have the complete product portfolio with us. Uh, we are number three or four globally as far as the energy bulb volume is concerned. And the markets and the customers are looking at China plus one sourcing. So, even if you are able to get 7-8% of the LED bulb global market, we are talking about adding approximately $500 million to the lighting revenue itself over the next 4 to 5 years. Now, same is the case with washers. See, one, when you are able to achieve the global level competitiveness and in-house design strength and some escape for depending on the, uh, on the domestic market, then you keep on pursuing the global market. And there is a definitive shift in the industrial footprint 
the global industrial footprint where the where in the alternate are being looked at our large and their customers are already sending some kind of feelers in that direction so it's not going to happen very soon it's going to be having a lot of deliverable and inclusion challenges but let me assure you this is the path you're going to pursue now in the case of mobiles yeah we are depending on the pli and our anchor relationships you know take us local right from the year 1 and uh, we are going to be working upon that we stand on our own feet in the next 3 to 4 years with some level of backward integration and also some foray into the odm part for basic 4g phones so these three verticals uh, we will definitely pursue for achieving uh, some kind of uh, competitiveness global competitiveness and a position in the global market uh, other than a part of the government policy intervention wherein uh, all of us are of firm conviction that now the electronics products being sold in there will be manufactured in there and we'll keep on driving it to wider it falls into our our filtration criteria of the scalability backward integration migration to odm and low work capital intensity so we feel and our uh, it's very difficult to give me the numbers but i think the opportunity is extremely healthy thank you the next question is from the line of sunani salgaonkar from jeffrey sandia please go ahead so thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers so my first so my first question is uh, with the uh, business mix changing more towards mobile phones and consumer electronics because of the new customer additions what could be the steady state operating margin that we should look at going forward Uh, so Shivani, your your observation is absolutely right. I think so. Both these businesses, as a percentage of revenues, will start contributing more, uh, and you will look, you will see that in the next fiscal also. Uh, I see mobiles, uh, NEM is division start will start contributing almost uh, 35 to 40 percent of the revenues next year. And uh, similarly, if I look at an extra pillar, this trend of consumer electronics as well, where we have a strong order book and we are adding more customers there. Again, uh, and uh, if, we, if the market is also shifting to 43 inches and above, uh, then clearly the consumer electronic revenues in, in terms of revenues will also be higher. Um, so my sense is what you see in this quarter, the kind of bidda margins which has come down. Of course, actually the bidda has grown significantly, but the bidda margins which has come down to 4.6 percent. I think so that should be the going run rate for next fiscal year as well. So between a plus minus 4.5 to 4.7 percent kind of a range. uh that will be the going rate for the bidda margins and this time so in my second question is more uh, from a strategy perspective our odm share right now is about 35% of our revenue mix uh with so many new opportunities opening up for us more in the design space where do we foresee that odm share to reach at say over the next 3 to 5 years so uh in the next uh, year or couple of years uh, odm as a percentage of revenue would be lower because the maximum growth is coming in the outlier is going to be uh, uh, mobile phone which is on a prescriptive mode and uh, led televisions which again largely is on a prescriptive mode now led television start with we are in works and we are in discussions uh, for some jdm kind of business uh, i have a strong conviction that somewhere mid next year we should be able to have some breakthroughs with some large customers now if that happens i feel that the odm share in televisions is going to go up to almost 15 to 20% mobiles would continue to be prescriptive for at least a couple of years to come uh any lighting is already at 91 92% uh, uh of uh, odm Uh, which further i think is going to increase to 95 96% because more growth is going to come from odm side only and appliances in any case is 100% odm and the other strategic thing whether it's set of boxes set of boxes again a part of it is going to migrate to jdm 
and uh, uh, in the case of medical electronics and wearables, to start with, it's all going to be prescriptive. So I don't have a, a number as such in hand that how it's going to pan out to be. But overall profile of ODM uh, versus OEM in respective verticals is what I'm sharing with you. Got it, sir. So, and lastly, what could be the steady state capex outlay that we could expect over the next three to four years? Uh, so, Swami, so we have mapped out our cash flows, capex, and the source of funding for the next uh, 15 months. Uh, my sense is, as I mentioned, this year our capex should be somewhere, we'll, we'll be closing somewhere around 145 to 155 of crores. And similar will be the going run for the next financial year as well. Uh, yeah, so, so, at least for the next financial year, uh, the, the, the number of the capex will be almost similar to this year. Sure, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nathan. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, Ms. Lal and Saurabh. Today, one question in terms of, you know, as the business is now scaling up, growing at about 20 odd percent or more, uh, how are, what are the supply chain issues that uh, could emerge uh, for you or for the country? Uh, you know, what makes you worried on the supply chain in terms of component availability? And are you seeing any progress related to this? Uh, you know, investments on the supply chain components in India uh, uh, through the ecosystem of these large brands which are giving you big business. So, the present supply chain challenges are primarily on the glass side. So, it is impacting both the open source supply for television and yeah. display for movies. Now, uh, some of the basic glass Paths of energy and warming have had a shutdown. And also at the open cell level, there has been some restructuring on the industry side. So I feel that uh, in Q, the current quarter and the Q1 of this next, of next fiscal, this kind of pain will continue. Uh, post that, we are expecting uh, the glass furnaces to revive by then. And there should be some smoothening of the supplies of glass, both for display as well as the open cell, from Q2 of the next fiscal. Mm -hmm. On the semiconductor and the IC side, uh, there is a significant shortage. Uh, one, because of the geopolitical situation, certain brands which were put under pressure, it mobbed up a lot of inventory. Uh, and also, a lot of semiconductor production and IC production is going in for the EV side uh, because of better margins there. So I feel that at least for a couple of quarters more, when the time the new capacities come up, the pain point on the driver IT side, on the microprocessor side, and also on the semiconductor side will continue. So that is the situation. And any investment in this context happening in India and the ecosystem? Not, not in India. I don't foresee that. The so second question was about the uh, competition. So, you know, when you're working with these global brands for Bosch or for that matter, even mobile now with Motorola, uh, I know India lacks competing capacities to you, but what are the other alternatives that these brands are considering? Are these like Turkish players or Vietnamese? Who are the alternatives for China plus one, which are also trying their hand? Thank you. So first, uh, yeah, the, the main competition from Vietnam, and in fact, they have banked a very large share of the global supply chain in electronics, uh, whether it's mobiles or other electronic products. So undoubtedly, it's Vietnam. Now, beyond, beyond Vietnam, uh, I see the next option being very seriously evaluated as a large global pairs is India. Uh, okay. I've seen that people, the companies, the large companies, which had their base in Thailand, they're also looking at India. Which had their base in Philippines, are also looking at India. So I would say in that order, China and then Vietnam and then India. And where does Vietnam score more than India? That's it. Sorry? Where does Vietnam score higher than India? In what aspects? It already has a very large scale. Because if you see the global export from India of electronics is somewhere around 6 to $7 billion. And Vietnam is already at somewhere around $100 billion. You see the footprint of uh, 
Samsung there. Samsung management is treated uh, like a royal guest there. And uh, mm. uh, Vietnam already is much ahead because the okay. ecosystem has already been developed there. But okay. Vietnam has been from limited manpower. So I don't think it can replicate completely what China is. So there would definitely be an overflow to other countries and which India stands a very strong time. So what I was asking a question was the on the labor cost on a per product piece basis or power cost or logistics cost is is India getting on any factor better than Vietnam so that incrementally the share of India can be higher too. So on the labor cost side, uh, India is better both on the cost and the productivity side. A productivity side we match them, and the cost is lower, and the power tariff is same. But there would be some disability on the infrastructure side and on the land side. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that would be our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing remark. Thank you and over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.